Many of us have seen laser shows before in clubs on our other events. They come in different styles, projecting graphic animations on a screen as a beam show using artificial fog or a combination of both. They can be performed indoors or outdoors, live by a light jockey or played back with a timeline program. The projector is of course where the light comes from. Modern projectors are using at least one red, green and blue laser diode. If more power is needed, multiple diodes are used like in this projector. Same colors can be combined with polarizing cubes, as the light from the laser diode is linear polarized. The beam gets passed or reflected depending on the direction of the polarization. Different colors are combined with so-called dichroitic mirrors. These mirrors only reflect one specific color and pass the others. These are mounted on fine adjustable mounts to align all beams exactly concentric. The result should be a white beam of laser light if the beam is perfectly shaped and the brightness or the power of each diode is right. But laser light is often depicted as a perfectly parallel and thin beam, but the reality is a bit different. The quality of the beam depends on the lenses used to collimate the beam and the size and shape of the light source, which is called the emitter. This can lead to beams being shaped as a square, oval or completely odd and nowhere near round. Additional optics like cylinder lenses or anamorphic prisms can be used to shape the beam of high power laser diodes. The rate the beam is spreading is called divergence and is not measured in degrees but in milliradians. High quality systems have around 1 millirad or less, which is less than 0.06 degrees. Cheap manufacturers often try to push their numbers by only giving half the angle, so be careful here. When it comes to the power of the laser, it is always given in milliwatts or watts. For small rooms indoors, a couple of hundred milliwatts can be enough, but on big outdoor shows, systems with more than 10 watts can be used. This is where some manufacturers also try to trick their customers, as often the overall power might be high, but the color is nowhere near white, but very heavy on the blue side, as blue laser diodes are the cheapest ones with the highest power output. This leads us to the safety concerns. In general, lasers are dangerous. Low power lasers with less than 1 milliwatt or laser class 1 are typically safe to handle, although you should avoid looking into the beam at all times. But when it comes to laser shows, we are talking of several hundreds or thousands or even ten thousands of milliwatts, and when beam shows are performed, the audience gets hit by the beam, so how can this be safe? The danger of the laser comes with the ability to heat stuff up. That's why your retina gets burned when looking into a laser beam, or in high power applications, metal can be engraved or even cut by a laser. This heat depends on three things. Power, beam size and how fast the beam is traveling. The more power the laser has, the hotter the lit area will get. The smaller the spot is, the more power is packed into the area covered by the beam and the slower the beam is, the more energy is transferred to a certain area. That's why only as little power as needed should be used and the minimum distance to the projector should be as big as possible, so even with full open iris, the retina gets exposed to as little laser light as possible when hit directly. So what's left is the beam moving fast and this is where the scanners that create all the beautiful patterns come in play. These are little mirrors mounted to an axle with a magnet, which then is very precisely positioned by a magnetic field created by electric coils. These are positioned 90 degrees to each other, so one performs the movement in the x-axis and the other in the y-axis. The mirrors have to move very fast to draw a full frame of the animation in a fraction of a second to display enough frames per second for a smooth display of the whole animation. So it's only one single spot that is moving extremely fast and in the meantime the laser diodes get dimmed so the correct brightness and color is displayed. A frame of a laser animation is composed of spots the scanners get positioned to. The animation normally is displayed with a constant number of points per second. Good scanners can reach 30,000 points or more per second or 30k pps. So if a frame is composed of 1000 dots, the scanners can display 30 frames per second. The more dots the frame has, the lower the FPS will get and the animation will get flickery. The wider the scanned angle is, the lower the KPPS will have to be as the scanners will otherwise get inaccurate. This is where many cheap manufacturers or resellers try to trick their customers because the standard for measuring the capability of the lasers is the ILO test frame at 8 degrees scan angle and the inner circle just touching the inner square like shown. Only the KPPS don't say anything about the quality of the picture as even the best scanners will display everything crooked with too high speed or too big scan angle. To comply with safety standards in most countries, the position and speed of the scanners need to be checked by a face safe device or often just called safety. A processor monitors how the scanners are moving and if they are moving too slow in a certain area, the lasers need to be shut off to prevent any harm. 
In case a program in the processor gets locked up, it needs to have a so-called watchdog, which resets the processor if a program is not executing fast enough and gets the system in a safe state. Additional safety features are a key switch and a remote emergency switch the supervisor can use. But how does the projector get the information what should be displayed? Many cheap laser projectors can be controlled by the light protocol DMX, which can tell the projector to display pre-programmed frames or applying different effects to the frame. Also sound to light functionality can be found in those cheap devices, which is working more or less good and doesn't have to do anything with a good laser show. The international standard for connecting laser projectors is the ILDA interface, which is a 25-pin DSAT connector which should not be mixed up with the old-style LPT port printers got connected to PCs back in the old days, as the ILDA interface has differential analog signals for controlling up to 6 colors and the X and Y position. Most projectors do have an input and through connector so multiple lasers can be fed with the same information. To get these signals, a dedicated DAC or digital to analog converter card is needed. There are a few on the market by different manufacturers with USB or Ethernet connectivity. By now, often to find are NetLace, EasyLace, Lumex, Recomposer and Flashback controllers. In more pricier regions, you might find QM2000, LaserGraph, Lacon or other controllers. When there is no ability or need to play pre-programmed shows from local storage on the card, a software is needed which matches the interface card. Personally, I use HE LaserScan and Dynamics as these are quite affordable but still capable of high performance timeline and live shows. For live shows, a MIDI controller can be used, but as I don't need that functionality, I only use the timeline editor in the software. Here a whole show can be precisely programmed to a track of music with all animations and effects per projector fixed in place and only the play button needs to be pressed after everything is set up and checked for safety in the location. The built-in 3D simulation provides a good look on how the show will look like. For a few decades, building laser show systems yourself was very common among hobbyists as ready-to-use systems were crazy expensive and the big community shared their interests and knowledge in internet forums and on meetings, but over the years Chinese projectors got cheaper and better with more consistent quality, so watching DIY systems getting used or built gets more rare every year, so only hardcore enthusiasts keep doing that. So if you are interested in buying or building your own system, keep in mind the safety issues with cheap systems and user error and gather information from forums or other experienced users as losing eyesight is not something desirable.